Dawn breaks over a Germany struggling to recover from the ravages of the First World War. The nation, once proud and strong, now lies in economic ruin and political chaos. The Treaty of Versailles, intended to ensure peace, has instead sown the seeds of resentment and despair. Its punitive terms have left Germany crippled with war reparations and stripped of territories. This atmosphere of instability and humiliation provides fertile ground for extreme ideologies to take root. In this post-war maelstrom, myriad political parties vie for control, each promising to restore Germany to its former glory. Among these, the National Socialist German Workers' Party, or Nazi Party, begins to gain traction. The party's charismatic leader Adolf Hitler captures the public's imagination with his fiery speeches. Hitler's rhetoric of national pride, combined with a scapegoat narrative blaming Jews for Germany's troubles, resonates with many Germans who yearn for a return to stability and pride. As the 20s give way to the 30s, economic conditions in Germany continue to deteriorate. The Great Depression hits, and unemployment soars. The Nazi Party, with its promise of economic recovery and national resurgence, grows in popularity. By 1932, it's the largest party in the Reichstag, Germany's parliament. In January 1933, amidst a backdrop of continued economic hardship and political deadlock, Hitler is appointed Chancellor of Germany. The Weimar Republic, Germany's first democracy, has given way to dictatorship. Hitler quickly consolidates power, suppressing opposition parties and implementing policies of aggressive nationalism, anti-Semitism, and militarization. Hitler and his Nazi party now hold the reins of a beleaguered nation. This marks a turning point in history, the rise of a regime that will plunge the world into another devastating war and commit some of the most horrific atrocities humanity has ever witnessed. And so, in 1933, Hitler and his Nazi party took the reins of a beleaguered nation, marking the beginning of the Third Reich. With power securely in their grasp, the Nazis set about remolding Germany according to their vision. The ideology of the Nazi party was a potent blend of anti-Semitism, Aryan supremacy, and autarky. Anti-Semitism was a deep-seated belief in the inferiority and malignancy of Jews. This ideology, rooted in centuries-old prejudices, was used by the Nazis to scapegoat the Jewish people for Germany's problems, ranging from economic issues to the perceived moral decay of society. Aryan supremacy, another cornerstone of Nazi ideology, was the belief in the inherent superiority of the so-called Aryan race, which they defined as non-Jewish Caucasians, particularly of Nordic descent. This belief was used to justify their policies of racial purity and their aggressive territorial expansion. Autarky, or self-sufficiency, was also a key component of Nazi ideology. The Nazis believed that Germany should be economically independent and not reliant on other nations for resources. This belief led to policies aimed at increasing domestic production and securing additional resources through conquest. To implement their ideology, the Nazis put into place a number of key policies. The Nuremberg Laws, enacted in 1935, stripped Jews of their civil rights and classified them as second-class citizens. These laws laid the groundwork for the systemic persecution and eventual genocide of the Jewish people during the Holocaust. The Nazis also began a massive rearmament program in direct violation of the Treaty of Versailles. This policy not only boosted the German economy, but also prepared Germany for the aggressive expansionist wars that the Nazis had planned. The establishment of the Gestapo, the secret state police, was another critical policy. The Gestapo was used to suppress dissent and opposition to the Nazi party, ensuring their unchallenged control over Germany. Through these policies, the Nazis solidified their control and began to shape a society that mirrored their twisted ideals. As the 1930s drew to a close, the world watched with increasing alarm as Germany's aggressive expansionism set the stage for another global conflict. The year was 1939. On a cold September morning, Germany, under the command of Adolf Hitler, invaded Poland. This unprovoked act of aggression marked the beginning of World War II, a conflict that would engulf the globe in a storm of violence and destruction. As the war raged, a dark and sinister plan was set into motion. This was the Holocaust, a systematic state-sponsored genocide that aimed to annihilate the Jewish people. The Nazis, with chilling efficiency, rounded up Jews from across Europe and sent them to concentration camps. The scale of this atrocity is staggering. Six million Jews were murdered, a number that represents two-thirds of the Jewish population in Europe. The war was not only fought on land but also in the skies. The Battle of Britain was a significant turning point in the conflict. 
In the summer and autumn of 1940, the Royal Air Force defended the United Kingdom against large-scale attacks by the German Air Force, the Luftwaffe. Despite being heavily outnumbered, the RAF, through their courage and resilience, managed to prevent a planned German invasion. But Hitler's ambitions were not limited to Western Europe. In the summer of 1941 he launched Operation Barbarossa, a massive invasion of the Soviet Union. This proved to be a fatal mistake. The brutal Russian winter and the determined resistance of the Red Army began to take a heavy toll on the German forces. The tide of the war was beginning to turn. In the same year Hitler ordered the implementation of the final solution, the plan to exterminate the Jewish people. This marked the beginning of the most horrific phase of the Holocaust. Jews were systematically transported to death camps where they were murdered on an industrial scale. The world would later learn of the horrifying details of this genocide, a testament to the depths of human cruelty. But the relentless march of the German war machine could not last. By 1943, the tide of war had begun to turn against the Third Reich. The Battle of Stalingrad, one of the deadliest battles in history, ended in a catastrophic defeat for Germany. The Red Army pushed the Germans back, reclaiming territory and inflicting heavy losses. It was a turning point in the war, a sign that the end of the Third Reich was in sight. Despite initial victories, by 1943 the tide of war had begun to turn against the Third Reich. A grim realization began to dawn on Hitler and his followers. The dream of a thousand-year Reich was crumbling, and the world was about to witness the fall of one of the most brutal regimes in history. With the Allied forces closing in, the Third Reich's days were numbered. The final years of the war were a desperate scramble for the Third Reich, characterized by key events like the D-Day invasion, the Battle of the Bulge, and the eventual fall of Berlin. The D-Day invasion, which took place on June 6, 1944, marked a significant turning point. This marked the beginning of the end for the Third Reich, as Allied forces launched an assault on the beaches of Normandy, France. The operation was the largest amphibious invasion in the history of warfare, involving over a hundred thousand troops. Despite heavy casualties, the Allies managed to secure a foothold, and from there, began their march towards Germany. Following the successful invasion of Normandy, Hitler launched a desperate counter-offensive in the winter of 1944, known as the Battle of the Bulge. It was the last major German offensive campaign on the Western Front. Despite initial success, the German forces were eventually pushed back, and their resources were critically depleted. The final nail in the coffin for the Third Reich was the fall of Berlin in May 1945. The Red Army encircled the city, trapping Hitler and his remaining forces. With no escape and defeat imminent, Hitler committed suicide in his bunker on April 30th. His death symbolized the downfall of the Third Reich, a regime that had brought untold suffering to millions. Eight days after Hitler's suicide on May 8, 1945, Germany offered an unconditional surrender to the Allies. This marked the official end of World War II in Europe. The once mighty Third Reich, which had aspired to rule the world, was left in ruins. The Third Reich, once perceived as invincible, was reduced to rubble and defeat. Its fall served as a stark reminder of the dangers of totalitarian regimes and the catastrophic consequences of their unchecked ambitions. It was a dark chapter in human history that should never be forgotten. The Third Reich left a chilling legacy that continues to haunt the world. Its demise marked a turning point in global history, sparking a wave of changes that redefined international relations and human rights. The atrocities committed under its regime led to the establishment of the United Nations, a collective response from the global community to maintain peace and promote human rights. The Nuremberg trials were another vital part of this legacy. These trials set a precedent, holding individuals accountable for their actions during times of war. They served as a stark reminder that no one is above the law. The Third Reich also left an enduring commitment to preventing genocide. The world, still bearing the scars of the Holocaust, pledged never again. This commitment continues to shape our response to atrocities in the present day. Though the Third Reich has long since fallen, its shadow continues to remind us of the horrors that can arise from unchecked hatred and extremism.